Speaking at Davos, OpenAI's Sam Altman says that AGI is coming in the closest future, but will have less of an impact than we all think. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we are headed over to Switzerland for some coverage from the World Economic Forum in Davos. Now, there is a lot of very reasonable skepticism around this event. Antipathy towards it has risen alongside antipathy towards elites in general. But there is no denying that a huge focus of the meeting is artificial intelligence. And as such, it's a great chance to get a sense of how some of the world's leading politicians and business people are thinking about AI heading into 2024. Today, we're going to focus on comments from Sam Altman, who, in addition to speaking on an official panel, has been doing a set of media appearances. The big banner headline that you might have seen is that in a session with Bloomberg, Altman said that he believed that AGI was likely to be developed in the, quote, reasonably closest future, but that, quote, it will change the world much less than we all think, and it will change jobs much less than we all think. Now, Altman said that he almost couldn't believe that he was saying that. And I think it's a reasonable question to ask whether that, one, reflects just an updated understanding and mental model of the world, having seen more of how GPT-4, for example, is interacting with the world, or if it's a specific calculation to try to dampen the narrative of AI as a terrifying and powerful and potentially world-ending thing. It's also not impossible that it's some of both. Indeed, in other comments, Altman did say that what they've observed with GPT-4 is that it has had a dramatic impact in how people work, but it hasn't yet led to lots and lots of job destruction. He said, in other words, it's much more of a tool than I expected. Now, there were a couple other things that I thought were really interesting from that particular Bloomberg interview. At one point, when asked about AI's impact on climate change, Altman said that his evolving model of the world had the currencies of the future divided largely between intelligence on the one hand and energy on the other. Now, when it came to AI's impact on energy, Altman basically argued that the requirements would be immense, more immense than anyone thought, but that it would basically demand an energy breakthrough. Allman said there's no way to get there without a breakthrough and basically argued that it was creating a larger incentive to spend more time on things like nuclear fusion. One other thing that he discussed in this interview, which was largely overlooked in the reporting, but which I thought was interesting, was in and around the conversation about copyright. Now, when it came to the New York Times lawsuit, Altman repeated something that he said before, which is that publishers seem to have a sense that OpenAI and other AI companies like them desperately need to train on their data, which Altman argued that they actually don't. That the entire corpus, for example, of New York Times articles represents only a very small data set, and that ultimately, they don't want to be regurgitating those things. Instead, the reason that he said they were pursuing partnerships with publishers was not to get around copyright issues for publishing, but to create a better ChatGPT experience where linked attribution was a part of what it could do. Still, that's all stuff we've heard from Sam before. What I thought was more interesting was when he talked about Dali. He said that he had spent a lot of time talking to artists and that when he thinks about what he'd like in the future, it's not just the ability for artists to opt out of people imitating their styles. What Altman wants is some version of a model where artists could custom create their own versions of Dali that did explicitly use their styles and make money from it in some way. It seemed clear from the discussion that this was not something that was an immediate plan, and it didn't even exactly seem like they knew quite how to do that in terms of cutting artists in. But it was the first time that I'd heard him talking about explicit differentiated versions of Dali, not dissimilar potentially from GPTs and their relationship to the main chat GPT, where artists could actually make money from their styles. Now, in another interview with Axios, he talked about the inherent discomfort that will come with the evolution of AI. Axios writes, Altman believes future AI products will need to allow, quote, quite a lot of individual customization, and that's going to make a lot of people uncomfortable, end quote, because AI will give different answers for different users based on their values, preferences, and possibly on what country they reside in. Now, when it comes to what's coming down the pipeline, it's clear that Altman is thinking a lot about an agentic future. For example, he said, soon you might be able to just say, what are my most important emails today and have AI summarize them. He honed in again on a theme that we've heard from him before around how AI advances could, quote, help vastly accelerate the rate of scientific discovery. But he said he doesn't expect that to happen this year. And there's definitely been a shift where it's clear that the company is really focused on launching their next model, whether it's called GPT-5 or not. However, Altman did say that they're going to take their time to make sure that it actually is the product that they want to release. Across these interviews, there was also a bunch of denials, most specifically that Sam had his hands in lots of little non-OpenAI pots. He said, for example, in the Axios interview that, quote, OpenAI is what I'm doing, and that it was a misrepresentation to say he's engaged in projects that don't support OpenAI. 
In a Bloomberg interview, he also denied having any sort of formal partnership with Johnny Ive, although he did wax poetic about the potential for future AI devices. Now, in addition to these Davos appearances, Altman also just joined Bill Gates on his new podcast. In that conversation, we got a little bit more about GPT-5 as well. Altman said that it will have much better reasoning capabilities and that it would be fully multimodal with speech, image code, and video support. He said speech in, speech out, images, eventually audio. Clearly, people really want that. We've launched images and audio, and it had a much stronger response than we expected. Now, when it comes to how much better GPT-5 will be than GPT-4, Altman actually sort of ratcheted up expectations from what I've heard from him before. Whereas in the past, we've heard him say things like, it won't be as big a shift from GPT 3.5 to 4. This time he said things like, at least for the next 5 or 10 years, we will be on a steep improvement curve. This is the stupidest these models will ever be. Now, while GPT-5 does not appear to achieve that level of AGI, during a recent speech at Y Combinator, Altman reportedly told the founders and entrepreneurs that they should build with the mindset that AGI will be achieved, quote, relatively soon. Now, one last revelation that I wanted to follow up on had to do with this change in the policy around the military. Reporters picked up recently that OpenAI had updated its policy that had previously said that its tools couldn't be used for military purposes to be what seemed to be a much more open-ended version of that language. In that same Bloomberg interview, Altman was joined by Vice President of Global Affairs, Anna Makanju, who gave a little bit more color about this policy shift. First of all, she said, those policies were written before many of those people got to the company, and they were imagining a future that they didn't really understand yet. Second, she pointed out that it hadn't changed in terms of the substantive ban on using ChatGPT and other OpenAI tools to create weapons and to otherwise do things that cause humans harm. However, what they did note is that they had been working with the U.S. military on a number of projects that include cybersecurity capabilities, as well as tools that could help with the prevention of veteran suicide. On a set of that Bloomberg interview, because we previously had what was essentially a blanket prohibition on military, many people thought that would prohibit many of these use cases, which people think are very much aligned with what we want to see in the world. Finally, when asked about the elections, Altman said it was good that we had a lot of anxiety about it. He argued that people probably should have been thinking about the reality of a Trump candidacy before the Iowa caucuses and advised that people would be better served spending a little bit more time asking why his message is resonating. But ultimately, he said, when it came to AI in elections, it was important to be focused on it, but not to fight the last war. He pointed out that there was a difference between the tools of creation and the tools of distribution and the different strategies were going to be required to minimize those risks. Anyways, very revealing and interesting stuff from Altman and OpenAI at Davos, and I'm sure just the beginning of what we will hear this week. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.